Hey all you little stinkers, we have some unfortunate news you may have already caught wind of. Rooster Teeth, our parent company, is closing its doors. Uh, so you may wonder, what does that mean for Tales from the Stinky Dragon? Well, to, complete, to be completely candid, we're not sure right now. We have a bit of time, and we will luckily be able to keep making more episodes for the time being. Uh, something we want to stress more than anything is that we love making this show. We're so grateful uh, for all of you who have supported it, shared it, drawn fan art for it, became part of this amazing community. It has meant the world to us. Uh, there are still a lot of unknowns, but what we do know is we want to find any possible way to keep making this podcast and playing D&D together. Uh, we hope you'll stick with us as we figure things out and continue to be stinky with us as we navigate our direction through this. Uh, I promise we will update you when we have more news, but for now, thank you for being here. Uh, if you purchased a puppet video or audio message for Stinky Worry, we will deliver on those. We don't want to leave you hanging. It just We're working on it right now. It's going to take us a little bit of time. I uh, also want to get the Groteth dice set out to you all. It will be available March 13th at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, if you check out stinkydragonpod.com slash store. Also, uh, we'll be pausing any future Discord events and live streams for the immediate future as we find out more information. Uh, the best way you can support the show in the meantime uh, is listen to the content and interact with us on social media and Discord. Uh, spread the show via word of mouth and share the news. Oh, and of course, stay stinky. Greetings, all you gargoyles. Stand in the Stinky Dragon and quaff our latest coffee. Brooklyn, Bronx, and Broadway. <laughs> it's a mixture of inanimate milk. No laughter. It's a mixture of inanimate milk. <laughs> a slash of chop clod syrup. A chomp of peanut biter. A skyscrape of coffee topped with Goliath's mini marshmallows. One nip of this nightly nectar, you'll have a chiseled physique in no time. Previously, our adventurers trekked through the Tales of Dock, the lowest level of the Vampspire. After encountering many bustling battlers busy with burdens from their counts, they eventually ran into Elga's battler bud, Quiffly. Can the party take it to the next level, or will they get served? Pour yourself a potation, let's proceed with this pungent pot boiler. hoping that whole thing was a gargoyles reference <laughs> and it was it was gargoyles the movie the disney cartoon oh uh, yeah what was the guy that, arbiter he does the voice that's for the halo dum dum yeah i know but the voice actor <laughs> hey you're coming in now we're going to match this in you guys is this how we're gonna play today we've had some tech issues this morning before recording i'm a little on edge i apologize everyone is in a great episode. mood I got hushed multiple times during you that wouldn't process. Stop talking. Yeah, you guys wouldn't shut up. We're talking about work. It's talking about work. We're talking about puppets. Now, there's that one time we're talking about dirt. <laughs> Why Why can't can't we be friends. Hello, my name is Gustavo Sorolla. I'm the Dungeon Master of a Putrid Party. I'm going to hit our four players with an arrow. Do it, end me. <laughs> what is your character's favorite physical feature of themselves? Character's favorite physical feature. I'm going first today. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Rice. I play Matty Confucius, the Akakrin Ghost Monk. And, <laughs> and I don't know if. <laughs> We haven't referenced your small mouth in a while. Hello, my name is Matty Kampichi. Okay, so um, my uh, I don't know if uh, most of you have noticed it, um, but I have wonderful tail feathers. Oh. They are, oh. they are I, I take care of them very, very carefully because they are very, very fragile. Um, but I've always been proud of them. They're very, they're very, you know, it's, it's important to take uh, pride in your in your appearance to a degree, and then I take pride in in my tail feathers. I like We're all that. Looking Major. respectfully. You may look respectfully. What color are your tail feathers? Black with a. I don't know. Have we ever shown Matite's tail feathers? Because I want to say black with red tips. Oh, so like, oh. okay. Because Matite is, like is Matite black with a uh, red accent. I like that. Like a fancy grackle. Hey guys, what's what's black? What's black and white and red all over? Matite is actually based off of a shrike. The newspaper. <laughs> what's a shrike? A shrike is a is a. Uh, <laughs> it's for all it's, you bird lovers. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, uh, there's a, I think it's, um, oh, it was a specific one. It was like, a, like an African shrike that had this coloring, something like that. Mm. Um, it's a bird that catches bugs and then uh, skewers them on twigs. It's a very cute bird. It, it makes little uh, uh, shish kebabs. Yeah. Shish kebabs. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
I'll take that inspiration die. They impaled him. No, it's not, it, 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 you've already got one. You're good. No, I don't. Which makes sense. Hey, I'm looking at it right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's go now. I'm, so, I'm, I'm so mad at you guys, all right? I can't just switch gear. Hey there, it's Chip Haney. Do you want a kiss? <laughs> no, I'm played by Blaine Gibson. Give you, I give you a kiss. I'm a level seven tiefling rogue, and I would say, you know, outside of my beautiful gams, you know, I show them off with my, my five-inch inseam shorts to really show off the, the work I put into the muscles on my legs and my calves. I'd say my mustache is great. It's uh, perfectly manicured. <laughs> shows that I care a lot about my, my uh, you know, appearance. Blaine it's, is looking daggers at my mustache right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It connects right in the middle over the nostril part. <laughs> For those who can't see Blaine's mustache, while being a wonderful mustache, I think he's he doesn't like that it, it has a little bit of a gap in the middle. It disconnects and it's... Why mm. don't you just kind of like comb it towards each other like a little comb over mustache? Cause he, cause it's comb it's over. Like the, yeah, right? Could you get it tattooed in like how some people get their eyebrows tattooed? Give me a pen. Idea. I can fix this for him oh real quick. Oh my god. Yeah. What kind of products does Chip use to take care of his mustache? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, conditioner, beeswax. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, what kind of do you use on your... I use wax, yeah. I use wax. wax. Yeah. More wax. <laughs> It's mostly you want to keep it trim is what you want to do. Uh. You want to keep it well trimmed. Chip melts a candle and then uses that wax on his mustache. <laughs> <laughs> My real life mustache looks like two caterpillars like fighting to kiss each other across the, uh, oh, the Rio Grande. They'll never meet. It's so sad. No. They're, they're a Greek tragedy. <laughs> exactly. Well, hello. I'm, I'm Barbara Dunkelman and I play Elga von Brass, the half-elf vampire barbarian, level seven. And, you know, Elga, Elga has learned to be very confident in her appearance, uh, you know, because she spent a lot of time living and learned that <laughs> you got to love yourself. And that's the most important thing. Mm. But one of Elga's favorite physical features is her curly blonde hair. Oh, nice. It bounces really nice. And somehow in the over 100 years she's lived, it's never grown. <laughs> <laughs> just stay, stay the exact same length. That's convenient. You don't ever have to worry about getting haircuts. It's true. But what yeah. if we like... What but if... my nails grow like crazy. <laughs> I want to cut those every day. So what happens if we like shaved Elga? Does she just, does she just stay like You'll that? You'll see pain. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you won't see what happens. You'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> You'll not see the aftermath. <laughs> You'll see my fist and then the floor. I'm Chris Damaris. And I play Barney Farney. Oh, this is going to be a good question. Barney Farney. Normally you do it in the voice. That's Barney weird. Farney. There it is. The uh, level seven cleric human. My greatest feature about myself is my sense of hearing. I hear. <laughs> sense of hearing? <laughs> I can hear really well. Just like the question you heard really well. This is a physical <laughs> attribute? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. It's ears, right? Yeah, it's ears. Ears. Okay. All right. your body? Uh, great lobes. <laughs> my ears. Both. They just capture all the sound. Are Barney's earlobes attached or detached? (laughs) Detached. (laughs) Barney definitely has old man ears where they have just grown longer. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's just that they've gotten danglier and danglier. Your ears and your nose never stop growing. Fun fact. They're probably hairy. But your eyeballs stop growing immediately. Hmm. That's why why kids have like giant eyeballs. Mm -hmm. That it for Barney? Yeah. Gus, what's your favorite physical what? feature about yourself? Well, for the bartender from Infinite Campaign, it would have to be eyebrows. Mm. <laughs> Very nice and thick. Much like two capybaras trying yeah, to kiss. Yeah. I wanted Gus to say something like his rock hard six pack abs. <laughs> no. Well, that's for, that's for Duncan for, uh, for Grotesque Campaign. Now. No, I just like the idea of your, of your character being the way he looks, but also just like just having the most chiseled <laughs> abdomen ever. Yeah, we've never seen him shirtless. I know. That's I'm saying like they're there. We promise you, they're there. I'm sorry it's to like ask Ned Flanders again yeah. because we're multiple C- episodes. We're like in the 40s, episode 30s or 40s. Hi, 30s. This it, is 38. Is Duncan the narrator? Yeah, yeah. He changed his voice though. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the Infinite campaign and started grotesque, he says he has a new voice he wants to try oh. out to tell this story. I must have missed that. Okay. <laughs> Continue. The subreddit was very nice and pointed out that in episode 20, you explicitly told us when you handed us over the Cartus de Aya, this is so you can keep in contact with the, the alchemist. <laughs> and we completely forgot it. And for episodes, just we're like, who's 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 talking to us? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought this up because I think every time you all talk about it, Mike and I put our head in our hands and have like a sidebar discussion over here. Like, oh, my God, they don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you used it. It recently, like the episode before last, yep. and that's why he just showed up. Like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity. He's there. He can physically show up. It and was, remind uh, you. His 
was it Francesca <laughs> gave it to us? Or, yes. Yeah, and Francesca's like, this is so you can keep in contact with my husband, the alchemist. <laughs> then two episodes later, it's like, who are we talking to? I don't know. The mysterious <laughs> cactus. <laughs> they said that legit, I'm in the land of the dead. And we're like, oh, Carol, no. <laughs> like, you guys must have been so fun. We missed so much. It was fun. It's fun. It's good. I like it. And don't worry. We did our last episode where we went through a labyrinthian uh, new location through many rooms. And then uh, it definitely hasn't been a month since we recorded. <laughs> and we will remember everything about Every where we went detail. through. I remember where everything is. Chris drew a map. I did draw. I all, drew a map. We all drew maps. Yeah, I drew a map too. Metaphorically speaking, you did not. Yeah, no. I'm. Oh, Barbara's looks, really looks really good. Holding out my map. Barbara's looks really good, actually. I have notes on it too. Recap time. Could I go look at the fountain or the ickers? Yeah, you begin walking to the north to walk up to the fountain, and as you're doing that, Elga, you hear footsteps around the corner, getting closer and closer. Are they coming from the east? Yes. As they quickly approach, you hear a voice speaking in hushed tones. No, this just is my day. You know this voice. It's a young male dwarf with uneven ginger hair runs straight into you hey. and spills a bottle of blood everywhere. Oh, my ma. Are you okay? Elga? Quiffly? Yeah, you found Quiffly the battler. Iki kiki. Iki kiki. Iki kiki. Iki kiki. Quiffly. Oh, she gosh. hugs him. Yeah, and he gives you a big hug back. Iki kiki. Iki kiki. Quiffly. Oh, Elga, you've returned. Yeah, how long was I gone for? Like a week or so? About a week. Your father was very worried. You were supposed to go to the peace parade and return quickly. Oh, well, we did go to the peace parade, but some things happened after that. We, got, we kind of got accused of something we didn't do, and then a little, a little shenanigans happened after that. We've been to a lot of places in the week, actually. My wife died. Hi, I'm <laughs> Chipaney. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, yeah, ya. these are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Some very tragic backstories that they have. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. You should be. Yeah, I'm, I should be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm letting everyone know the light of my life is gone. This smile, it's a its a facade to hide what is truly happening behind my dead eyes. Hi, I'm Chip Haney. Pleasure to meet you. Well, again, I'm so sorry to hear that. But might I say, sir, you have quite the mustache. <laughs> Thank you. I put a lot of work into it. It looks like it. Is that these wax? It uh, is. No, just like regular wax. Uh, <laughs> it's candle wax. <laughs> this is over. Over. He's a vacuum. And also our dog Stinker, <laughs> but he's less important for some reason yeah. on the hierarchy of pets. No, I just Hoover's a little bigger. Wow. Isn't Hoover like big? Yeah, he's, a, he's a big goat. And he's hauling dead animals. What What are you doing with the giant goat out here? We're trying to take him, these other animals to the animal dump place. The dead bodies. Oh, the refusery. Yeah. Where's that? That's just down the hall to the east. Okay. He I'll points in the direction you have not come from. Uh, right at that moment, uh, a bell starts ringing uh, on Quiffly. Oh my, I need to leave. I was sent on an errand that I must complete very quickly. But be careful, Elga. Something's going on upstairs. What's going on? The Sratu are looking for someone, or maybe more than one person. I was sent down here on an errand before I could find out more. By who? By Count Von Brath. <gasps> oh, your papa. My papa. I need to get to this as quickly as I can. Just be careful, Elga. I'll come back and find you as soon as I'm done with my errand. Uh, okay, but which way is to, to Dracula? Upstairs. Take the staircase in the southeast of the Tales of Doc. Okay, that's good information. Okay, I have to go. Bye. High and five. he very quickly... Did you say high five? Goodbye, Quiffly. Bye. Quiffly very quickly shuffles off uh, to the west. Soon. Quiffly the Quiffly. There he goes. Wow. I could tell that you guys are going to be best friends. Chip and Quiffly. Me and Quiffly? I could use a friend right now. <laughs> you should be nicer to Hoover. Oh, make an animal handling check. Okay. Thanks for reminding me about Hoover. That's a 10. Does that do it? Or should I use my inspiration die? I will use uh, my inspiration okay, die. Okay, you tell me. Yeah. We know you will. <laughs> I'm using He's my inspiration die. 12. Well, that's better than a 10. Yeah. I like that Chris infuses all of his characters with a little bit of a hoarding tendency. Like they find stuff and they want to hold on to it's it. It's almost as if it's uh, a trait of Chris. <laughs> 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 <It's characters. laughs> I, I, 
Oh, I, th- I thought there was a rebuttal coming. No. <laughs> <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't come up with one. He started, well, and then it just kind of fizzled yeah. out. There was, there was something that happened on the puppet set the other day where Chris found, like, I just a piece of junk. It was, like, some mesh piece of metal, and he's like, we could use this. So we could put, like, some light through it, or I could use this as, like, a gate. Yeah, we're going to keep this. And it's like, I'm never, that thing's just going to sit the junk. <laughs> yeah, Hofer is uh, beginning to become very restless. It doesn't seem to... Uh, Enjoy uh, following you at the well, moment. Well, let's let's go to the let's take Hoover to the dump. <laughs> well, dump. Th- this might be a good time for me to uh, re-describe the room that you're in. Please. You all were in that hallway, and you had seen a door labeled Scryery, and you had entered that room. It's an austere room with a red sigil on the northern wall, just above a kneeling bench, and a bloodstone font in the center, filled with swirling crimson ichor. To the east is a passage leading to an iron door, and to the south, this is where you came from, is a passage that leads to an iron door as well. So there's iron doors on the south and east walls. Correct, and you came in the one from the south. Okay. And quickly, quickly said that it was in the east. Is where he the, said southeast, southeast stairwell. East. So if we go east and then kind of maybe loop around south, we'll find it. And you had come in this door from the south using an iron key that you all had found, just a reminder. We found that with the painter, right? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Did we investigate the font in the middle at all? I think uh, we were, you all were about to start doing that stuff when Quiffly entered at that Rudely moment. Rudely interrupted. <laughs> I shall go kill him. Um, no, I won't. Quiffly. No, I won't. Yeah, in, in the, uh, the, at the end of the previous episode, I believe Elga was walking over to the font to begin investigating it, and that's well, when she is, uh, Quiffly uh, was interrupted. She has yeah. quite the keen eye. Well, there's like a kneeling bench or something, so maybe. It's those, it's those bad eyes, they're so keen. Yes. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> I guess, should we investigate it? I'm going to ask a dumb question. Does anybody know exactly what a scryery is? Mm, Where do you write letters? I, that's what I thought, right? But why? Because scrying is the uh, the act of writing something on something um, or creating. Is it? Isn't it creating like language? Scryer? I, I feel like that's scribing. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm, saying is like it, I'm, I'm going off of like Latin origins. Root words. Or, uh, root words. Yeah, Gus, but, that's, but that's why I'm asking what a scryery is. Can I do a check to see if Mateen well, oh, knows? I'm, cu- I'm curious to see if anyone on the team can answer. One who divines, sees, or predicts the future oh, by means of scrying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Bimmy Dunks. You're welcome. Google. And dictionary.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia. Okay, so there's a font, and the font is... Uh, Icker. Got icker. Yeah. What color was the icker? Black. Red. Red. But it's not blood. Did we figure out it was blood? See if it's blood. Wait, wait, hold on. You said it was red? Yes. So do you remember the peace treaty where it had all the names of the... the, In red. Oh. And then the wolfman's name was in black because she passed. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wonder if that has anything to do with like something that was written here, like originated here. We should check the... the, the, We should check... Are there logs? (laughs) I really wish we'd taken that map. Map? map? What map? There's a map. It, it looked like the tenth episode on the wall. The where we noticed the the th- oh, like in the library uh, of the land light. too. Yeah, and we just left it. Did we? I thought we took that. No. It's there, fine. Are you talking about the globe? Maybe it was. It was, a, it was a globe. Yeah, 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 I don't think we could take there, it. Some there, there was, a, there was because there, he has said this before, and you have said yeah. it was a globe. Uh. Right. There was a sky chart. <laughs> <laughs> there was a sky chart that I believe yes. Elga took. Elga did. And, yeah. and, and we've had, we've we've been around into this neighborhood. Before. Correct. Matit sits down at the bench. The kneeling bench. Sure, kneels at the bench. Okay. And I would imagine it would be in a position that. Kneeling over and looking into the pool would be a, 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 a like a normal position. Your legs been that way? Yes, I've been that way. <laughs> no, that's a good question. Yeah. Okay. The the the, the B- bird knees are sometimes like backwards, they right? They go backwards yeah. like a velociraptor. Yeah, but Eric Eric Cochran's, I don't know. Actually, now I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you said it so ridiculously. <laughs> <laughs> you just like put them back and put your like hips on well, the you bench. Done a lot of <laughs> kicking. Yeah, which Forward. you can kick with the other way as well. Uh-huh. It looks like it goes both ways. It's like a chicken wing. It comes out like a knee and then goes back. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like an Eric Cochran could kneel there. It yeah. seems stable. It seems like a design flaw. Make me a religion check, Matid. What is I'll do an anatomy Matid's check. religion modifier? It is plus one. All right. That's surprising. At least it's not zero. Or negative. Almost a nat 20, but instead it's a nine. You kneel down on this bench, and it's really uncomfortable because it's very low to the ground. 
Okay. I mentioned that there was the, uh, a sigil painted on the northern wall, and that's kind of what this bench you kneel down on is, is near. That's what it's kind of facing. What's the sigil say? You recognize it now because you're here, but it's the sigil of Vania. It's painted on the northern wall. Is it that upside down triangle with the, the V in it? Right. It's like a, a, a red blood drop, and inside is the outline of a white upside down triangle. How big is the sigil that's on the wall? It's pretty big. Let's call it eight feet big. Whoa, eight feet big. Tall. Yeah, really big. That's a door. That's a door if I ever saw one. Is it high up or low down? It starts from the ground and then goes up. Door. I kick it. You kick it. All right. I'll make an attack roll, I guess, to hit it. Whiz my talons. I think. 24. Yeah, you hit it. Roll some damage against uh, the stone wall. I will. I don't think this is going to go over well. I do five damage. Mm -hmm. You know, you like pop up from your kneeling (laughs) position and then give it a spinning kick very quickly and deftly. No normal person could do this. It's uh, your monk training has uh, has, uh, adapted you specifically for this kind of stuff. (laughs) For kicking doors? (laughs) Well, for like jumping up and then immediately kicking. It's it's pretty impressive. I am a precision tool. You are a tool. (laughs) (laughs) I see I'm not the only salty one today, apparently. Someone's just mad that Hoofer's acting up. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you kick it, and the wall shakes firmly, but nothing seems to happen. Okay. Uh, and you asked if you could look into the bowl. Is that what your question was? Sure. No, the bowl or the um, the font is more in like the center of the room, whereas this bench is more on like the northern portion of the room. Okay, so it's large enough that there's a, there's a distance. I just yeah, this the, room the is spatial. probably like let's say let's call it fifteen by fifteen. Okay. Do you okay. want me to go look at it? Yeah. I'll, I'll go look at the, the, see what the, we can the see. font. Yeah. You called it? It's a font made of bloodstone that's filled with some kind of red liquid. I keep thinking type. Yeah, what, what do you mean, what do you by, mean font? by font? It's, oh, a, it's, it's like Times New Roman? Or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is there any parchment or quills or any writing utensils? Um, no. But Remember, let, it's let me, a room of divination. But right. let me get back to Barbara and Elga because sure. uh, she was investigating the, the font. Yeah, what does font mean in this? Think of it like a, a fountain, kind of. Okay. Oh. Okay. With Made of bloodstone mm-hmm. with, you said, blood something some kind of red liquid red liquid i feel like you got to look inside and like yeah these visions of the future i mean can chip look in uh El- elga i think is about to look in yeah yeah let's do elga <laughs> chip comes and shoves elga out of the way <laughs> <laughs> no me <Wait, dude. laughs> chip i will tell you what i see and then you could come over if you want sure you look in and this particular font seems to be like a big almost like a big bowl and it's just filled with this red liquid. What happens if you uh, put cereal in it? I thought the exact same thing. <laughs> what would be the best cereal to put in this bowl? Oh, the, whatever Count Chocula's got going. Yeah. Uh, what does he have? He's something chocolate. Cho- right? Chocolate with with marshmallows. Are there marshmallows in yes. Count Chocula? Okay. Oh my God. Trust me. Chris is very passionate about Count Chocula. <laughs> I just remember, as I was patiently saying, we. what if you put your face into it? Okay. I mean, it looks tasty. Uh, Elgo dunks her head in. Yeah. And does a blurble gurble. <laughs> what, what is it? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> 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 Unless somebody in my mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, you dunk your head in to the liquid, and yeah, nothing seems to happen. It's, 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 you, some gets in your mouth, ac- quote unquote, accidentally. Is it blood? And yeah, you can tell that it is, it is definitely blood. And you pull your head out. Uh, out from the, the bowl emerges uh, Elga's bloody head, just gore dripping everywhere. Anybody know a line from Carrie yeah, real quick? Say, Hi, Carrie. <laughs> How do I look? Splendid. Happy. This was what I would look like as a redhead. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. What about uh, ask you a question or something? You know, like let, let the like oh. water calm down and then like, you know, try to summon a, in a vision or something. I don't know. Um, hmm. where is Dracula? You're asking the bull? I'm asking the bull. That's interesting. How interesting. He goes, that's interesting. Nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> this, we find out this is like a, a toilet or a bidet. <laughs> <laughs> Make me an arcana check, Elga. Oh, uh, eight. The bowl kind of shifts a little bit, and you get a vision in the bowl mm. of a dark uh. figure on the ground holding a, a bottle. Dark figure on the ground holding a bottle. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, amongst what maybe bells? What dark kind of bells? Dark figure on the floor, as in like on the ground. On the ground, as in like prone, crouched over, kneeling. Okay. What kind of bells? It's hard to tell. It might not be bells. Jingle? It's a. It's a very. It's like a small little metal things. Maybe. Okay. It's a very 
vague, kind of blurry vision. Uya as uh, is uh, apt at Arcana. Plus one. No. No. Oh, actually, actually, plus four. <laughs> I have plus four. I I'm, believe Arcana is an intelligence-based skill, I know. and I think in the two campaigns we've done, nobody has invested in intelligence. I so. have plus four on Arcana. Do you? Yeah. How? Okay, if I was a monk and you had me invest in intelligence, you'd think I was an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, I'm a barbarian. Okay. <laughs> so you're a plus four? Yeah, yeah, All yeah. All right, uh, Chip. Maybe you should try. Okay. Uh, mm. Chip, come over to this bowl and ask you the question. Any question you. Like. Okay. I feel like Chip would call it Arcana or something. Oh, Arcana. 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 Text Arcana. Arcana. I don't know. What do we want to see? Uh, what? What's Eddie up to these days? I don't oh. like that guy. What is it? Uh, Eddie. Show me Eddie. <laughs> Give me Eddie. <laughs> uh, no whammies. No whammies. No whammies. <laughs> make, make me an Arcana check. Okay. Come on. Come on, Chip. Come on, Chip. Come on. That's a 15. Nice. There you go. The blood kind of swirls and coalesces. And this, it starts to form what appears to you to be like a Sferatu, and then it very quickly fizzles away. Hmm. It showed a Sferatu, we might be... Uh, I think he might be, yeah. If this is a future thing and a Sferatu comes in, then we know that this thing predicts the future potentially. Or maybe Eddie is disguised as a Sferatu right now. My gosh. Because I think it's showing current. Hey, Bo! Show me Barney. <laughs> I like that you address it as hey, Bo. Bo, show me Barney. Make me uh, an Arcana check, Elka. I just want to see if it's right now. Yeah. Okay. A nine. <laughs> can, can I loom near as well? And I, yeah, I want to see Barney too. Just to help. I want to see <laughs> Barney. <laughs> Barney, make me a wisdom save. Oh. Hmm. 24. The bowl and the blood begins swirling, but never actually fully coalesces into a vision. Bull, what do I eat prefer breakfast? <laughs> Make an arcana check. We're just going to spend the whole episode by this. this is, if you're listening, we're getting ready for 90 minutes of hot bowl action. Six. Do you see a vision of Count Chocula? No, no, no. <laughs> Nothing seems to appear. So it must present or... I would think it would be like currently like... Uh, what was, what was the definition of scryery? Was it Scryer, visions? It also refers to a seeing or peeping as in a practice rooted in divination and fortune telling. Okay. It involves gazing into a medium, hoping to receive a significant message or visions that could offer personal guidance, prophecy, revelation, or inspiration. I gotta say, uh, man, Google's the fifth player right now. Oh, where's my family? Make me an arcana check. <laughs> Tombstones. <laughs> Nat 20. If you were never going to get mad at Chris looking up every flower under the sun on Google, you can't get mad at Marvin. Some of them are under the sun. Some of them are I'm not mad. I'm not making a comment. You rolled a a nat 20. Mm -hmm. You see your family, like, moving around very quickly, like, running here and there. Not, like, in in a panic, but just moving around, bustling. Then it very quickly fizzles away. Where? Where? You can't see a background, really. You just see them. Could he tell how old they were? Why don't you make me a... Let's call that perception, a perception check to see. Someplace red. Because if they were the same age as when you... (laughs) Someplace red. 19 plus 5, 24. (laughs) Wow, killing these rolls. They look just how you remember them. Maybe it's because we're in the vamp spire and I'm just just on the top of my brain, but like maybe they get turned into battlers, you know, like they're like helper people. No. Okay. Well, you know, I just like, yeah, I was trying to go with the rewire where, where they're going around and running around. I don't understand it either. Hmm. I have one more important question to ask the uh, font. Uh, Mr. Font. Um, <laughs> Bull. Uh, okay, oh, Bull. Who of our party is the most beautiful of our party? <laughs> Whoa, that's fun. <laughs> font, font on the ground. You see your reflection in the bowl. Oh, uh, wait, wait. But I see mine. <laughs> try, try bowl. <laughs> I kick Barney away from the bowl. <laughs> Perhaps we should uh, proceed. Okay. Well, we feel we should come back to this for information, but I think if this is current, present, what's happening right now, we need to find Dracula, because I think he's up to no good. Or my family. At this moment, you hear footsteps coming from the southern hallway where you all entered from, and uh, two Sferatu walk into the room. Hello. Bonjour. Hello. What is the meaning of this? What's going on here? We're looking for the place to dump these bodies. I seem to have gotten turned around. Elga is covered in blood on her face. <laughs> Miss Von Graf? Yes? Are you okay? I'm great. Just had a little snack. What seems to be the problem? I'm surprised you recognize me with my new hair color. <laughs> the scryery is not an appropriate place to be taking snacks or to be bringing giant goats. Leave here with haste. And they point to the door to the east. Dispose of that animal. 
Okay. And the goat. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> By the way, how did you enter this cryery? Uh, through the door in the south? With what key? Oh, uh, the door was already it open. Was, uh, it was open. It was already it open. It was unlocked. Someone must have been really irresponsible. It was unlocked. Make me a deception check, Elga. Oh, man. Man, you should have let me answer. Yeah, this is you, yeah. Sorry. Well, I think they would be addressing Elga, though. Yeah. But yeah. I could have interjected. I do have a plus four. You got this. A 12? I could use my inspiration die. 12's not bad. That's the, that not bad. They, they do a check against it. Yeah. Oh, this. We'll so it depends on what their role is. So we're happy with a 12? <laughs> I don't know if we're happy about it, but. I'm going to use my inspiration. Yeah, okay. Do it. Do it. Deception. This is uh, this is high stakes. Oh man, not much better. Thirteen. That's worth it. It's better because they're gonna roll a twelve. Do I get a a, a bonus because I'm so cute? What's your cute modifier? Plus ten. I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> they say we'll have to investigate that then. Yes, you should. You need to keep this place safer, okay? They turn around and head back to the south. Well, I say, uh, and he says, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? <gasps> you heard that, guys? I did. What? Please keep your guest under control, Miss Pompey. <laughs> okay. That's Eddie. That's Eddie. Guys, don't embarrass me. I pull up my knife. I can stab. Stab. <laughs> they turn their back to you and begin leaving, walking down south. I grab uh, Chip by his uh, shitty hood, and we head to the east. Does that door we came in, by the way, lock from the inside? Yes. Could we close the door and lock it? I'll say this for Rob to probably do that when okay. they when they leave. Okay. They just locked us in here. Let's uh maybe maybe put a, something in the door to. Keep it a jar. Well, we have the key. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah y'all have a key. Sorry, I thought, I thought you, you lied to them, and I was like, wow, okay, that must be the truth. <laughs> I, I, got my, I got Chip with my deception. You fooled me. So, Matid drags Chip to the east, uh, Elga and um, Barney? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Hoof. And or Hoofer. And, oh, yeah, make an animal handling check. He's getting kind of stubborn. What's going to happen if he just, like, completely loses it? 21. All right, yeah. He's, uh, Don't need to worry about it. <laughs> you're, uh, you're persuading him. I'm this way, Hoofer. You head down the passageway. To the east, and you're met with an iron door. Knock, knock, knock. No, knock, just the knock. key. Oh, Can we see if our key works on it? Yeah, there is no keyhole. Uh, I, is there a handle? Yes. I try the handle. Yeah, it's open. Aha! Why did you kick it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to hurt your feet on the iron. Why would you have to kick a door? There's a handle right here. You're right. All right, so we enter? Yeah. You enter, and this is a round iron chamber reeking of putrescence and smoke. The floor is covered in blood and bodily remains. Mm. To the east is a narrow chute, and to the west you just came through an iron door. Then to the south is another passageway with stairs leading up. Does it look like there's a place where, like, bodies are dumped? Probably the chute. Just so stinking. The chute? The chute leads down to the room you're in right now. Like, it goes... I should say oh. it, go, it comes from above. Like it, oh. it, it, oh, like someone has been up. dumping bodies are into there this bo- room. Correct. Okay, so this is where do- bodies are dumped. Yeah, there, there is blood and bodily remains all in this room. I guess we could put those bodies in here. Yeah. So this this is probably the refuser. Yeah. I'll yeah. Have Hoofer dump the bodies, or I'll dump them. I'll pull them off of Hoofer. Yeah, you pull them off, and uh, you know, I guess just dump them there on the metallic floor. The floor's covered in blood and viscera. Is there any value in trying to climb up that chute? You should try. Yeah, what the heck? I don't mind getting a little dirty. Can I climb up the chute? I want to climb up the chute. Yeah, it's 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 pretty narrow. You can give I, it a I try. I help him and shove him in as hard as possible. <laughs> this won't be a problem. Uh, why don't you... I got you here. Okay, Hopefully no go. one's dumping bodies while you're trying to go <laughs> up. <laughs> I put all of my monk strength into getting this tiefling into the chute. <laughs> All right, I guess, Chip, make a, let's call it a dexterity saving throw to see if you're able to, because the walls are slick with all the blood and everything, and it's a pretty narrow space. Okay, and what do I do? 21. I'm going to see here what his role is first. 21. I guess, Matid, if you're very enthusiastically trying to help, you're, like, shoving him from behind, like, pushing his legs and his butt up into yeah. the into the chute. Make a strength check, I guess. Six. So strong. Chip begins moving so quickly, you almost, you kind of, like, miss. Like, you, you, start, you put your weight into where you where he's going to be, but he's, like, already kind of uh, scurrying up the chute. So you don't, you don't quite, you're not able to help him, but it doesn't seem like he really needs it. See my little butt just going, wee, wee, wee. <laughs> <laughs> How's that traction on that slide there? 
I feel like the sneakers, my rubber, the soles of my sneakers would help me get traction, right? You begin climbing up and you hear like a rattling noise coming down the, the chute, but you very quickly with your high dexterity safe manage to dodge out of the way as some body parts fly past you. Okay, and as they do that, I say, oh no, a blade, a spinning blade, ah! So I guess the re- the other three <laughs> nice. of you in the room hear Chip screaming and then two arms <laughs> oh, uh, fall oh, into the room. No. It was bound to happen at some point. I guess Chip's arms turned a different color after they got chopped <laughs> off his body, because isn't he purple? <laughs> so now that I'm like in the shoot and stuff like that, do I see like, is it multiple entrances into the single shoot, or is it like a one specific room? No, it's just it's continuing to make its way up. Maybe that's a shortcut to get. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like if I just climb this thing all the way and then lowered a rope. There also are stairs to the south. That's true. I was just trying to cut to the chase. Find the Dracula. Chase to the cut. Yeah, you uh, uh, squirrel your way around, and the chute doesn't actually really make any bends. It just kind of goes straight. Mm-hmm. So you go straight up, and you eventually em- you start to see some light, and you emerge, and you see like a grate covering the entrance or the mouth of the chute. Oh, great. <laughs> like uh, bars, almost like like a jail cell. Okay, I I, I move them. I, I I don't think it's gonna work, but I just kind of see if they're like. Yeah, it's it's pretty. I will warn you before you touch it. It's pretty gross. It's covered in grime and just like blood and viscera. I, I don't care. That's right. not gonna dissuade me. He's an assassin. He's seen it all. Yeah. He's done it all. Yeah, you grab it. He's got it. nothing to live for. <laughs> you grab it and give it a little shake. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you grab it and give it a little shake, and yeah, it seems like it's pretty firmly locked. Okay, so it's like a latch on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Time, time to ride a slide. Okay, then I go, I let my arms up, and I go, wee. <laughs> make slide. another dexterity saving throw. Okay. What if he doesn't throw good? 24. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I you, hold my spear up just in case an enemy comes down <laughs> to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear, wee. Yeah, uh, you, you hear uh, Chip is yelling, wee, as he comes down the chute, feet first, and uh, he, like, plants them and tucks them right under him and pops up standing. Yeah, no, there's just the bars at the top. I you couldn't go anywhere. All right. Perhaps we should uh, proceed down these stairs. Let's yeah. go, let's go or south. Up these stairs. Oh. Yeah. Because this is exactly where Quiffly said we should go, southeast. All right. Are we still bringing the goat or? Yeah. Okay. Make an animal handling check to see if the goat follows willingly. Gus is just waiting for him to fail You rolled a one. I rolled a one. We did. Mm, Yeah, Quiffer is not uh, not interested in goat. He's uh, he's gnawing on the fleshy part of a thigh that he's found. He's not really interested in moving now because he's found something to eat. He seems happy. This herbivore of an animal (laughs) seems happy (laughs) eating meat. I just want him to get home safe. I think he's home. <laughs> I, I, I don't think this is a safe place, Hoofer. Dang it. Oh, no, he rolled a one. I guess we'll have to move on with our Hoofer. <laughs> and for this to be a factor, we have to continue to deal with every step of the way. But he's eating, right? He's happy. Yeah. I know, but I, I don't want him to get Wait. blooded. Wait. Does anyone have a way give to me, get him? Give me one second. Give me one second. Did you second. say you don't want him to get blooded? Oh, oh, yes. Give me one second. It's not permanent. That's the problem. They're thinking about something that I don't know what I don't know what they've, they've got on mind. Chris seemed like he knew exactly what John was doing. I do. What is the thing? Oh, it's an item. That's what it was. It was an is item. It was a dagger or something? Yeah. It was my tuning fork. Can I banish Hoofer? <laughs> I gotta say, I was not expecting that. <laughs> I I knew exactly where you were going with it. And I'm like, yeah. So you were happy about this, Chris? Well, I want to. I want to. But, but, but like, um, I can't see. Hold on. Well, it's better than being slaughtered. Who knows what's safer for him, though? Let me let me look up the spell for banishment because I think it's only <laughs> sending him to goat hell. Can, how Wait, many times not... could you do it? I have another idea. If that doesn't work, banishment. It's a concentration spell, and the target remains there until the spell ends. At which point, the target reappears in the space it left. Mm. So yeah, sorry. I, I, I try to banish. Yeah, actually, you know what? Barney doesn't know this. <laughs> <laughs> Barney doesn't know how long banishment works. He just knows that I have a tuning fork. It's true. I banish Hoofer. Goodbye. <laughs> Hoofer, I'm, I'm, he'll be safe. I'm sending him to the Australian plane, and, and Jack will take care of him. He's going to be on the a farm. farm. Yeah. Oh. I, uh, and he will, he, I, I believe there's actually a lot of goats there. Hopefully you're going to be in a better place. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, he's going to, and we will visit him again someday. Wow. What a Euro. <laughs> Can I give him a hug? I think he's already My gone. <laughs> yeah, you may give him a hug. It's fine. But be brave, Hopefully I know you well. He's chewing on a, he's still chewing on that leg. 
God. I cast banishment on this goat. Okay, the goat disappears from existence. Marty <laughs> uh, uh, goes to Mateed and like just hugs Mateed. <laughs> Thank uh, you. You're welcome. I think I sent him to Australia. Could uh, Elgo start? <laughs> <laughs> could Elgo start chewing on that thigh that Hooper was sure, chewing on? Absolutely. I just want to see what the big hype was about. Mm-hmm. On the list of planes, Australia is right by Pyroa. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from each week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goal. Factor has two-minute meals. You fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Pancakes, smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast, midday bites, and more. No prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat. There's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. It's flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. Sign up and save. Uh, I've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head over to factormeals.com slash dragon50 and use code dragon50 to get 50% off. That's code dragon50 at factormeals.com slash dragon50 to get 50% off. Misty Mountain Gaming Dice Company has an incredible catalog of dice in all sorts of materials like stone, resin, glass, and metal. Misty Mountain Gaming offers free shipping to the entire United States and now has new affordable shipping rates for international shoppers. Their dice are perfect for any RPG like Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, Shadowrun, Savage World, Math Games, or pretty much anything else you can think of. They also have tons of specialty sets like their Ragnar's Bone Dice Set, Legends of Valhalla Hollow Metal Dice Set, Eldarune's Blackout Metal Dice Set, and more. Misty Mountain is the only dice company that offers a lifetime warranty on all dice sets, including stone and glass. There's new dice sets monthly. It's the biggest selection on the web. Tons of other gaming accessories, including leather bags, leather books, dice trays, miniatures, and more. You got to check it out. Our friends at Misty Mountain have an exclusive offer for our listeners. Just go to mistymountaingaming.com. Use code STINKYDRAGON for a free acrylic dice set of your choice when you spend $20 or more. One more time, head over to mistymountaingaming.com, and that code is STINKYDRAGON. You get a free acrylic dice set of your choice when you spend $20 or more. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever, whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States, and Shopify's the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 promo trial at shopify.com slash dragon, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash dragon now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash dragon. All right. Staircase? Problem solved. Staircase. Staircase. All right. Uh, yeah, you uh, head down to the south, and as you exit the room, an iron door closes behind you when you enter the hallway, and you hear the sound of flames coming from the room you were just in. Oh. Oh, uh, good. We saved Hoofer from that, that fire. <laughs> you actually, oh did, you actually <laughs> did save Hoofer. He definitely, he definitely will not appear in about a minute, uh, or if I just lose concentration, uh, and it'll be burned alive. <laughs> 100%. Not hey, but dude, look at this thing that I got here. <laughs> After several seconds, the iron door opens again, once again, and uh, you see that the room is left charred and uh, burned up. Chip just comes over, and he's just like, Mateen, Mateen, Mateen. <laughs> Chip, you could go in there. You're fire resistant. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Elga, stop. 
<laughs> and play a little game. <laughs> All right, we head up the stairs. Yeah, you head up a, a, a couple of stairs and continue down south through this very narrow passage. It eventually dead ends and then turns to the west, and you're faced with a door there. Dead ends and goes to the west? Yeah, the, your dead ends and then there's a door to the west. Is the door got a handle? This is a wooden door. And, and with a handle sign? Yeah, with a, with a handle. There is no sign on it. Can I listen through the door? Yeah, make a... Perception check. Would do that with pleasure. Yeah. Nah, it's 12. You feel like you hear a set of footsteps walking on the other side. It seems like it's getting louder, like it's walking towards the door. Which way does the door open? In towards you. I uh, open it quickly. You open it quickly, and down the hall, you see a, a lone Sferatu patrolling, looking uh, in your quietly. direction. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Since I have perfect recollection of anything I see, was it a very long, narrow hallway, and did I see any other openings in the hallway? It was a very long, narrow hallway, and you, with your perfect recollection, you yeah. remember this is the hallway you were in before when you entered the scryery, oh. with the locked door. So we've just gone in a circle? Yeah. yeah. How did we go in a circle? Because you left east from the scryery, went to the refusery, went south, and then, hit and then it went west. Yeah. So that hallway, though, had, I think, another route that we hadn't explored. Correct. There was another to door the to, left. The, to the south, depending south, from, south, from, south, where, from south, where you're south, facing yeah. now. Yeah. I thought we came in that door, though. Okay. So you came in from the west. You won't be able to understand this, but there was a on my on my map because it's just my scrawling. We got a hallway. There was a bunch of openings. One of them took us to like where we met Hoofer. One of them was from the repair shop. One of them went to the bestiary. But this one, there was one that we never went down. So was that door that we hadn't gone down, is that between this door and that Sfratu? Or is a Sfratu ahead of that and we'd have to get past him? The door is between you and that Sfratu, but he is closer to it than you are. Was he looking at it this way? He's walking in this direction. So yeah, he's, this is the direction he's looking. Okay, I was, I'll address the group. Okay, so there's a Sferatu down this hallway, but there's a door that we need to still try out. All we need to do is we need to get past the Sferatu, which we've done pretty well so far, as long as we are able to deceive them one more time. So I think that perhaps, is there anything we can do to make Elga more believable with I magic? What do you mean? I'm having a great time <laughs> showing my friends around the vampire. Is there anything? There's no reason not to trust me. I'm very persuasive, but they seem to really want to talk Don't to Don't forget Elga. in the scryery, I saw that I, I asked for Eddie and it showed me a Sferatu, so he could be undercover here in the vampire. What would you like to do with that information? I don't just letting you guys know. You, you get a surprise attack from a frog who turns into a giant green monster, guys. You know, like your good friendship told you about it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep. Let's go through. Okay. Perhaps Elga should take the lead. It is actually very fortuitous that we no longer have Uther because he seemed to be uh, drawing some it's attention. A bit of an attraction. But he's but he is where he's supposed to be. He's happy exactly. with he's happy on the farm. <laughs> and on the he farm. Is, uh, it's fortuitous. We got him out safely. In fact, yes. I just got a message from Jack, and he's already settling <laughs> in. <laughs> did, he send any, did he send any pictures? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, I draw a picture <laughs> <laughs> really quickly with a big smile, and I just show. <laughs> and a Barney. Field of yeah. beautiful trees. Yes. He looks really happy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Barney's, Barney's cataracts um, are making it difficult for him to be able to yeah. tell. Let's see, now draw Barney's family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, okay. Uh, so, yeah, let's proceed and uh, see if we can make this work. Micah says you can post that on uh, Astralgram if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you open up the door, and there is a lone Sferatu walking in your direction. Act like you're supposed to be. Uh, yeah, uh, Elga just attempts to stride past to the door we're trying to get to. Yeah. Okay, you um, you stride past, and he looks at you and says, Back from the refusory so quickly? How did you know we were in there? Because he sent us that direction. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. We took care of business very well, very quickly, very professionally. And the guilt, too, I see. Handedly handles like that is below your station, Miss Von Plath. I was doing it. Oh. That makes more sense. Yeah, you know, I wanted to give my friends, like, the full experience, you know. <laughs> Show them the behind the scenes of how I operate here in the vampire. Is there a gift shop? He doesn't answer you. Okay. I'm right. I asked you a question. Is there a gift shop? Is there a way that I can, like, make my wings get big and just cover both Barney and Chip <laughs> from, like, the vision? Like, you could banish them. 
<laughs> Actually, you know what? Mitty just astral leaps right now just to exit this conversation. I wish I had that ability in yeah. real life. Just like, oh, man. I, I don't want to be talking right now. Whoop. <laughs> just appear 10 feet from anywhere you can yeah. see. The Sriracha says, very good. And then continues his uh, patrol east back in the direction of the refusery. Still Great. looking for that gift shop. Shut up. <laughs> I will end you right now. Do it, please. <laughs> okay. okay. So we continue down the hall yes. to the door. Yeah, there is a door that goes to the south. It's not quite opposite from the scryery. It's offset like a little a little west of that, like yeah. 10 feet west of that, is that door that heads south. Okay. And there's a wooden door. Has it got a handle? Yeah. <laughs> Every door we come across now. Can we open it? Listen, uh, is I it have open? trauma. Okay. Yeah, I we know. all have trauma yeah, from it. doors. I do a perception check to listen in. Yes, I'll get it open. <laughs> okay. 23. Uh, you, you do a perception check to listen in, and you hear, like, a lot of, like, um, clicking sounds. Oh. Bats. <laughs> like what kind of clicking? Oh. What's me? Typewriters. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds familiar. Are they all followed by a, just a ding? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, why don't, you, why don't you proceed? Could Elga peek in? Yeah, you peek in, and you see a tall chamber that uh, the floor is stained with guano. That's bad a bad poop. Ace Ventura How do you two? guys all know <laughs> that? Ace Ventura, Ace Ventura, Ace Ventura 2. They taught an entire generation of boys that love dumb humor. Guano. <laughs> what it was. Guano. That poop. Okay. Could I look up at the ceiling? Yeah, you look up, and the ceiling it's like, a, like I said, it's real, a really tall chamber and it like goes up and it's very dark, but you can see there are bats flying about and r- nesting all over the room. Okay. Your people. Nesting, is that right for a bat? Roosting, they're doing that upside down hanging thing. Is there any more openings in this room? It says a tall chamber. Yeah, uh, Elga, you also see a door. Besides this door that you're entering, there's also a door to the east. Door to the okay. east. At ground floor level. Yes. Anything above us, like a opening that the bats go in and out of? Possibly. It's hard. To, oh wait, you have like yeah, hundred foot dark vision. <laughs> yeah, you can see that there is a narrow opening at the very top. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you uh, talk with some of these uh, these inhabitants? Okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I think you have to be a different kind of uh, version guys, of you right now. Do you guys understand me? Make me an animal handling check, Elga. Uh oh. They all attack Elga. Oh man. Six. They have no reaction to you. All right. Bet. <laughs> Elga disappears, and in her place is a, 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 a adorable little bat. Hello, friends. I don't know why I'm making my voice higher when Michael just do it in post. <laughs> yeah, don't strain yourself. Hello, everyone. It's me, Elga. Uh, bats. Uh, fellow bats, like you guys. <laughs> Hello, fellow bats. How's it going? <laughs> you did that last time. That's oh, just yeah. How, that's just how Elga says hello to the bats. I'm still learning what it's like to be bats. Hello. Um, welcome. Good hunting today. The bats are talking? Good hunting yeah. today, she indeed. She talks to the giant she bats, to bats. At the, that we met that had the other goat. Yeah. You all don't understand it. This yeah. is bat talk. Oh. Yeah, you just probably... Uh, well, they understand me. But if you're talking, you're talking, talking to them. Yeah. Okay. It's like you're speaking a different language to your other friends. Yeah, I'm in the Matrix. <laughs> yes, good hunting today, indeed. Many insects. Many insects, because that's what we like to eat. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, as a bat. Much blood. Anyways, uh, what's a good way to get to Dracula? <laughs> Bats. Can you tell me how, <laughs> how, to, to, get, <laughs> how to get to Dracula? <laughs> what is Dracula? What, the, what? They had a vampire in Sesame Street. Are you guys just like normal bats or are you kind of, couldn't you change into anything? Bats are bats. Okay then. I think I think these think they're low intelligence. Guys, I think these guys are just bats. <laughs> I don't think they're Dracula bats. How many are there? One. <laughs> Two. <laughs> How many are there actually? So that I can keep my uh, my puppet card. Count is actually not a vampire on Sesame Street. He is described as looking like one, but doesn't isn't actually because they don't want him to be a vampire. Oh. Yeah. Just had to say that. Just so that wearing people, a spirit Halloween costume. So people don't get in the comments and go, John, he's not a vampire. I know that. How many bats are there up there? Just a lot. There, yeah, there's uh, there's quite a few, a few dozen different bats just all over the place. Yeah. So, you know, just flying. The, some of them are, you know, nesting, doing that upside down thing. And some of them are just kind of like flying around in the room. And every now and then one will leave or one will come back. The bat looks at you. The bat you were talking to, Elga says. Fred changed the other day. Fred? Fred. Into, like, human-looking? How did he change into? He fell on the floor and got white stuff on him. Oh, I think that means he died. It's guano. Uh, Could I fly up through the little hole in the ceiling? Yeah, you fly up. The bat yells. Farewell! 
UAV online. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's it's a very narrow shaft, maybe only like a foot in diameter, and it's several hundred feet tall. And eventually, you follow it long enough, and it leads out the top of the vamp spire. Just to outside. Mm-hmm. Would you say, like geographically, are we at the top of the vamp spire, or is this like a separate, like chimney kind of like a chamber in the middle of it? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. So, like, if 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 this is like going up to the ceiling and exiting out, is this theoretically the top of like the vamp spire, or is this like a separate tower? Like this a would column. be this would be the very top. Oh, at the, this very is the very top. top. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, could I, while I'm outside, could I just do like a cursory glance to see if I could see like any windows that are open, or like if I could see Dracula? Standing by a window. Yeah, is Dracula I'm, standing on his balcony, just yeah. looking longingly <laughs> out. Make a, an investigation check with advantage or no, because I'm far away. I'll say no, because you haven't. You, you're not able to like get up. Man, I'm not rolling well today. That was only <laughs> an you, eight. Do you keep your little glasses when you're a little bat? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> little spectacles. Yeah, yeah. You 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 know do a a, a very quick fly around the vamp spire, and you realize there aren't very many windows, and the few that there are are like boarded up and covered. It's probably because of the sunlight. Maybe do some clicks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do I hear anything quickly? <laughs> like echoey? No, no, no response. Okay. Dracula! Dracula! <laughs> it would be so faint, like the tiniest little Dracula! Yeah. Dracula! She's trying. I yeah. appreciate it. No, uh, you get no response. Okay. As you're out there flying around, you hear a very faint howl in the distance, however. Like an animal howl? Yeah. Like a... A werewolf howl? Oh. It'll sound better when Micah does it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he should use Gus just yep. for that sake. <laughs> You've done his work for him. We're just putting more work on him. Could yeah. I tell if that's coming from, like, somewhere in the vamp spire or somewhere outside? Oh, definitely outside. Outside. Yeah, far away. Okay, that's creepy. I fly back in. Welcome back. Thank you. I put out my arm like one of those, like, hawk people. Falconer. Yeah, falconer. Could I land on Chip's arm? <laughs> yeah, you land on Chip's arm. Ah, uh, yeah. Watch out of that! <laughs> <laughs> I gently place Elka Becca on the ground. No, you can, I can stay here. Okay. Oh, you're like a pirate. As you all like are doing parrot. this, the door to the east opens up. Okay. In scurries a battler who, like, doesn't even look at you guys. He walks up to one of the bats, ties something to its foot, the bat flies off, and then he very quickly leaves. The battler leaves through the eastern door again. So messenger bats. <gasps> oh, we have those notes, those letters. Oh, you remember. Oh, is this the, what was the room called that we had to, mm. is this the aviary? You would think this would this, be the aviary. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I, I uh, summon another bat with my letters. So I feel like it would know what it to do, right? Yeah, they're just there. Okay. You just tie it to their yeah, leg? I, I just tie it to their leg. And I say, go, be free, fly this to the post office. I don't know. Yeah, you tie the letter to the bat and it, it seems like it knows what it's doing. It just immediately takes off and fl- begins flying. Do it to all th- three of them. Two. <laughs> Does a notification pop up, achievement unlocked? Does he get an experience points for <laughs> completing his side quest? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, nothing you're going to write down, but we're keeping track of it. Okay. <laughs> that means that they're not, he just deleted No, 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 I can see it right now. The DMs keep track of all. Yeah. It's true, they know everything. Don't question. What about the second one? You do both? Yeah, I do both. I do all the letters that I have. Except for the cartus is, Because that, that obviously goes to obviously the, goes to the alchemist. 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 Make me a, uh, obviously. On the, for this one, make me an animal handling check. Why don't you, Chip? Okay. Since we're doing a lot of those now. Yeah. This is the episode of animal handling. A little 11 minus one. That's a 14. As you're tying the letter to this bat, it gives you a little bite on the hand. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Rabies. No, it's, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I was like, it's kissing me, ah! And then it flies off. Okay. <laughs> can I do a medicine check on my bite? <laughs> yeah, can I, can I check it out too? Yeah, both of you can make medicine checks. I'm sure it was just an accident. It's a zero. I'm fine. Uh, 24. <laughs> Zero. Yeah, Chip, you're totally fine. What do you do? That, 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 that wasn't even a bite. It was like a little scratch. Yeah. You had a 24 bar? Yeah. It seems like the bite is very superficial. These are very small bats, so it barely broke skin. It's 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 only bleeding ever so lightly. Yeah, but is it, can I check for rabies? It's not the United States. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there aren't rabies in other places like this. It's okay. Skipper does this to me all the time. I'm used to it. It's magic rabies. Magic <laughs> Maybes. Maybes. <laughs> You don't think that there's anything worrisome about the wound, Barney? You're all good. Okay, we go. I go through the door. The door to the east? Yeah. Has it been a minute yet? Sure, why not? Oh, dang it. Is that how long you can be a bat? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just say definitely since you flew out and then flew around the vampire and everything, it's definitely been a minute. Okay. Turn back into Elga while you're up high in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still on Chip's arm. Yeah. 
And what does everyone else do? Does everyone else follow Matita out the door? Yeah. yeah. And I want to do that thing that gives me advantage on initiative. Okay. What was it called again? Vigilant Blessing. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure I know what's going on. Yeah. No, no. I, I just want to keep it stocked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You walk out to the east and the passageway immediately turns to the south. And there's uh, some stairs that lead up. And then the passageway continues down to the south and then branches off to the west. And then there's a door at the very southern end. Is it a fancy door? No, it's a wooden, a plain wooden door. And the passage to the west, does that, where does that connect to? Just above the bestiary. Okay. Can I listen through what the door, the, the, the door? To the south? Yeah. Yeah, to you, the west. No, the no, west is just south. open. The, the door's to the south. The other door. Oh, there was a door, door to the south. Door, yeah. 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 It's a wooden door. Make a perception check to listen to that door. Well, you give it a listen, and in that one, you don't really hear uh, anything at all. Okay. I quietly open the door. And peek in, peek in. You quietly open the door and you recognize this room as the cellar. How the cellar? We're on the top of the floor. Have we been to the cellar before? Yeah, this is, um, it's a pretty confined room that smells of copper with crimson stained floors and there's stacks of barrels yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, 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 that's this mm-hmm. one that goes here. to the uh, commissary. Yeah, then to the east is a swinging double door, uh, which leads that goes into that dining to room. the commissary. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm lost. Okay, so we don't want to go south, we want to go west. I guess. Yeah. Sure. So we just did a circle then, I'm assuming. Well, a lot of this is circles. So we're going west down an open passageway. Are there any rats in the room? I mean, he, he said we had to go southeast to get to the no stairwell. Rats. I wonder if when we right, were in there. We did a big circle. And so we've got now we've gone south. And then that took us to the bat, the bat aviary eventually. And then. I just wonder if when we were in the refusery, we were supposed to go out that. There east. was no other way to go out of the refusery that would have. Uh, east was the way we came. East was the chute. The chute. And west was the door we came in, and south was the only passageway out. So we are uh, we are negating, we are using up ways to go. And so I think going okay. west is, is a new way, and so that's good. Okay. Let's go west. So you're going to enter it's the... like above oh, the BCR? Oh, oh, I see. You're going to take that passageway to the west. In- yes. Instead of... Back to the south. <laughs> okay. You're sitting at home and you don't know where we're going. No, hey, do we. Neither do we. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah, you take that passageway to the west, and it eventually uh, dead ends in a T intersection with another passageway heading north and south. Have we been here before? Yes. You know that this passageway to the south... There's a door there that goes into the bestiary. And then to the north is the passageway you took that took you over to the scryery. Okay. okay. So we are we are running out of ways that we haven't. I, I, we must oh, have missed you, something. But you know what? We haven't done. When we came into this vamp spire, there was a direction we didn't go, correct? At the T? Uh, yes, but you were told. One was the moat, the blood moat. No, 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 no. There was like the two colors. Oh, I, yeah, that was the where you found one was the way to the blood moat, and then the other was where the dwarf was, or the um, painter. the painter, the artist was. And then you went south from there, and there was another T. Yes. And then you all went west there, and that's what eventually took you to the workshop. And we never went east. Correct. <laughs> so, I still feel like we've rolled on. out what we're supposed to do in the scryery. What or, is possible here is there's basically, in my in my opinion, there's two chances here. One. There is a place here still that we haven't gone to of these like of this part of the vamp spire that where that our maps might not have uh, gone through everything, or we should have gone through east and everything we just did was not the final destination. Gus. Oh, I thought you were talking amongst yourselves. I mean, yeah, it's possible there is that passage where you didn't go down to the east. Should we backtrack? Because according, because I don't have. He's right. I don't like when Chris. No, agrees. I agree. I know. <laughs> I'm looking. I have a map, John. Now I'm second guessing. So you all, as so you all are the, standing there talking, two Sferatu uh, approach from the north. They round the corner from I a passageway that heads off to the west. <laughs> they round the corner and uh, run into you all here, standing in, just north of the bestiary. Hello. You spawn Brown. If you see you again. Yes. Anyways, what do you want? <laughs> Quite unusual. They're just spending so much time in the tells the dog. Where else should I be? Oh, God. Come on. <laughs> Perhaps on the floor above. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you just take us there? If we had time, we could. But we are investigating something at the what moment. What are you investigating? Suspicious activity. Yeah, what kind of suspicious you, you, activity? Stop. 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 <laughs> stop. <laughs> Let's not ask any more questions of the people investigating us. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in the script. <laughs> Don't talk to the cops. Don't talk to the cops. Don't say anything to the cops. Or, <laughs> let's just let people play. <laughs> That's fine. If this is Chip in character, it makes sense. Saw so in the scryery that the that I, when I asked for Eddie. We saw a Sferatu 
so there could be another investigation happening and we need to be like aware of if if eddie is present as well. valid question so and we have our cover with uh, Delga. What, what's the uh, suspicious activity like who are you looking for what happened out of the ordinary infiltrators mm, that sounds really unfortunate can you tell us more about your friends, Miss Van Breath? No, they're kind of shy. Anyways, we're going to go now. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Do you start walking off in a direction? Yeah, let's, should we go just back the way we came? So from where you are, you could go back east where you came. There's a, a passage west that you know takes you to the workshop. And then the, there's the passage that they emerged from, which is just north of that and also goes to the west. Let's just go to the what? To the workshop. We could do that. I have a question really quick. Yeah, what's up? The sign that said Tails the Dock, where was that sign over? I thought the sign Tails the Dock was at... I believe it's when you first entered. Let me double check that. The first entry. Yeah. So when we... Yeah, it's the main entrance where you uh, first came in, that first door you came before in. Before the workshop? Yeah, way before. Yeah. So okay. then, no, but I, actually, no, I'm asking specifically, was it the when we came directly through after we'd given the password? Yes, right there. So was there another way to go that no. was not the Tails of Doc? No. no. So then why did they say, why are you in the Tails of Doc when there is another way that we could have gone anyway? I think what they asked was, why are you spending so much time? Down here when we could go up. Because we're at like the bottom. Whereas okay. I'm okay. from the okay. top. That, that makes sense. I, I, it just, it, I, I worried of like, I thought the sign was at the entrance, but if it had been at this like west and east mm -hmm. break. So if we go west, where where does that west take us? The, uh, so one of the workshop? passageways to the west takes you to the workshop, mm -hmm. and then there's another one to the another passageway to the west that's just north of that that the Sferatu emerged from that you but have not been, been down. There? No. Okay. Oh, then let's do that. Yeah, let's uh, I guess see where the Sferatu came from. Yeah, going west through where they came from. And uh, you all, you know, very quickly uh, begin making your way to that west passage, and uh, as you're doing so, uh, a couple of rats run out from that direction as well. Can I shoot them? With a crossbow. With, no, with his gun. <laughs> you know, Barty's got a gun! Uh, yeah, make an attack roll. Okay. I don't have the rats. Because that was another side quest, and he wants XP. 20. Oh, yeah, you hit uh, one of the rats. Roll some damage. Oh, my God. That's six. Oh, yeah, that kills it. Do you want to take a shot at the other one? At least yeah, it's not a hamster, shot. am I right? <laughs> the other one. Uh, it's a 21. That hits. With uh, 10 points of damage. Oh. Yeah, so uh, you very quickly uh, shoot at and kill two rats. Can I tell where they were going? No, they're dead. Well, like, where did they merge? Can I see? Do I see, like, a mouse hole? Make a investigation check. Three. No, it seems like they were just running down the hallway. Hmm. Just normal rats. Not dead rats. Anyways, shall we continue through? Yeah, so you all uh, head through this passageway, which actually has a couple of steps down. It only proceeds for about 10 feet, then it curves to the north with some more steps down. Goes another, let's call it 30 or 40 feet, then dead ends with a passageway to the west. Then as you make this turn to the passageway to the west, you realize you're back near the entrance of the Tales of Dock. This is the intersection John slash Matid was asking about earlier. This was the place we didn't go. So yeah. now we're back at that T. Correct. You're back at the T. Uh, so this is the side you did not probably explore. Probably just like a back staircase that leads back down. That's what I'm saying. We, we have just now come through the option that I was suggesting, which you, to come from an east direction, you have to come west. I have an idea. Hey, uh, speaking of Barney, you see some more rats. I shoot it. Uh, that's one. Uh, take a shot. Should we just follow? Like, it's, it's coming from the west. We should just follow the rats. I think Gus is about to dump as many rats on us as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Should we follow the rats? <laughs> right? Yes. So instead, of yeah. instead of shooting it, should we follow yes. it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Can we do that? You're going to follow it? Or, okay. or see where it came from? What makes more sense? See where they're coming from or follow where they're going? <laughs> see, if it's going towards us, like to get past us, then we don't follow it. We shoot it. And if it's going back to where, then I say we follow it. I'd say follow it. Follow it. Follow it. Follow it. Follow the rat. So everyone's in agreement that you're not going to kill the rat and you're going to follow it to see where it's going. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if it goes too far, I'm going to uh, use my telekinetic and grab it. Or we just follow it and let it be a rat. <laughs> if, it, if it's like getting away. I don't think it will. Yeah. Okay. Make a... Is the, meta, is the rat a metaphor for us that we're in all our ways? Despite all our rage. The rat race. So I'll say, Chip, you took point on, I think, I felt like you took point on saying you're going to follow the rat. So why don't you make me a survival check? Okay. 13. That's not it. It's moving very quickly, but you're uh, you're able to, to keep pace with it and the whole party behind you. And it goes down the passage you just came from, goes past where you were talking with the Sferatu, and it goes through a, a chewed out little corner of the door into the bestiary. Which is where we found Hoofer? Yeah. Hoofer 2.0, here we come. Maybe, come maybe there's something in here. 
I, 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 I continue to follow. I open the door and then see if it, like, we don't want to lose touch with it. So I'm imagining Chip is uh, doing the speed walking where it's like his hips are moving really fast. <laughs> it's, it's a combination of that. And then once it starts really going fast and I'm like bear crawling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All four. I'm feral. Was there something in the beast here that we, there was cages. Could we just uh, look around this beast here? Yeah. There's, uh, I'll, I'll re-describe it for you. It's a large, cool chamber reeking of fecal fetidness. It has straw covering the floor and is stocked with stacked cages confining various creatures along the western wall. To the east are chains and metal harnesses hanging on the wall and a steaming cauldron of topaz liquid and an ascending ramp leading to another room uh, to the east. And you follow the rat in and it begins walking around the room eating various things. I shoot it with a crossbow. All right, take an attack roll. Should we have gone from where the rat came from? I don't know. Could I, like, brush away some of the straw on the ground to see if there's anything 50. underneath the straw as he's killing a rat Yeah, again? let me just have him roll damage, and then I'll, I'll answer that question Wait, for so you. so this wasn't the origin of where the rat came Six. from. Six. We were yeah. just the rat's death. We were just following it on the path it was taking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you move some of the straw around, and you see that uh, beneath it on the floor is just, like, old blood and animal waste. Okay. Uh, you, you feel like the straw is just put on top to kind of Sop it up, yeah, to to kind of uh, keep that stuff from being directly underfoot. Well, have we investigated that topaz liquid? Don't think that's you, a lot. You saw someone. Topaz is not red. You think topaz is red? Is it? What 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 is topaz? <laughs> no, tell us, tell us, Chris. Is what it, color is I, topaz? Is like a maroon? No, it's it's more of an orange, right? Orangish yellow. I always think of topaz more like teal. I'm gonna look it up now. Oh, yeah, is topaz teal, like teal. A bluish green. Am I crazy on that? What am I thinking of then? Well, Topaz the gem is apparently orangish like you're describing. Yeah, yeah. I'm That's thinking fine. of the gem. Mm. So then would the gem be different than the... Where did you both get... You both... I, I had know. blue, green. I had like a maroon in my head, which maybe is similar to orange-ish. I guess Topaz can also be frosty blue, apparently. Huh. Really? Yeah. Weird. Anyways. So Topaz is nothing. Topaz is everything. But topaz is, is, a, is, is, a, is a rock. But it's not blood is what I was Correct, saying. correct. Yeah. Could I look at the Topaz liquid? You saw a battler come in at one point in the last episode uh -huh. uh, and take a drink from that that cauldron. Uh, and then they, I believe they went and grabbed an animal and let it out of here. Ah, it's the Baja Blast. <laughs> ah. <laughs> we the, found it at last. The battler blast. <laughs> there actually is a like a orangish yellow Mountain Dew. Next time, next time an, an, a Feratu comes, Chip, why don't you follow them and see where we are? You mean the battler? No, Feratu. Like they're, Feratu? They're, 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 Feratu? They're, they're, they're investigating the area. Maybe there's a spot we missed that they're going to investigate. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like super onto us, though. I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to take a drink of the topaz. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I got to lose? <laughs> Nothing. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. What the heck, gang? Make me a constitution save, Chip. Oh, there we go. That was a better roll. That's a two. <laughs> How does it taste? Get me out of the vampire! I want out of here! Get me out! Get me out of here! I don't know if you remember, but at the start of the last episode, I described this as a very chaotic, like almost like insanity inducing place. And I feel like it's you all have realized why now. You are you are in the tails of Doc. I mean you are in the thick of it. And I'm loving it. I think that uh, that orange or green uh, liquid made uh, Jip go crazy. <laughs> I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at myself. <laughs> you, take, you, <laughs> you take a drink out of the cauldron and uh, uh, it, uh, it, it, it tastes terrible. Uh, and it almost makes you want to like vomit from how foul it is. Oh, yeah. I'm getting notes of... Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> and what are the macros on it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's all carbs. It's carbs all the way down. Pure sugar. Terrible in a bad way. It makes you feel tingly all over. Could I try drinking some? Yeah, make me a constitution save. Ten. Yeah, you're able to, to keep it down. It, doesn't, it, it tastes terrible, but maybe your palate's a little more in tune with this. Mm. I do like that we are at such wit's end. We're trying to find a floor up, but we're like, let's just drink stuff and see hey. if it tastes. Now we're just, we're just, we're in the escape room part where we're just touching yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's like spice where it opens your mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. prescience, here we uh, go. Uh, at that point, as y'all are doing this, from the east, a battler enters the room. Uh, oh, again, not even really looking at you guys. Walks straight up to the cauldron, takes a big drink out of it, then approaches the wall to the west and opens up one of the cages and lets out a wolf and begins leading it out. I grab the battler. Yeah, please. What? What? Who? How do we get upstairs? 
to the living quarters of the vampires. We are about to drown you in this topaz goo. <laughs> Tell us how to get out. He points uh, out I the- I cast v- a visage of the astral <laughs> self and make men and, and get, uh, a, a adva- uh, what is it, advantage on intimidation checks. I also just have good advantage on or, yeah. uh, intimidation. Yeah, make an intimidation check. Yeah. Both of us? Yeah, both. Sure. And I make harmless tremors on the ground for one minute. <laughs> 25. Whoa. I, I rolled a 10. Don't you have advantage on that, Matid? I did. I rolled it twice. There's a six was the other one. <laughs> oh, d- d- don't hurt me, please. Either of you. Uh, uh, um, uh, he, he points to the, the door to the east. Just let Ramian down, please. I, I'm just trying to get my work done. <laughs> the door to the east takes us to the commissary. How do we get from there? Just keep going. Just keep going east? <laughs> yeah. Oh, please. That's if all. it is wrong, I will come and end you in ways that have not been written in the history books what yet. What color is topaz? Is it orange or is it blue? Tell us! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to haunt me, are you? He's looking at you, Matid. My eyes glow <laughs> even brighter. No, please. Uh, uh, just put Ramian down and you can forget I was ever here. But just keep going east. Keep going that way. Are you talking to a third person? Who's that? Uh, are you are you a ghost too? Yes. <laughs> oh, no, no. 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 <laughs> we got him. We got him. Wrap it up, everybody. That's Ladies the end of the story. We got him. Mission accomplished. Yeah. The, the walls go down. It's all been a, a bruise. Everyone take your masks off. <laughs> Sit right over there, Mr. Bernie. <laughs> all we had to do was torture him with the Tales of Doc for two episodes. Okay. <laughs> He's oh my broken. God. There is a door to the east in the commissary we didn't go through. Ding, 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 ding. It's there on my map. We didn't go through there? No. Oh, I think we got distracted because we met Quiffly last we got time. Because we side quests. Yeah, yeah, you did pick up a side quest there. I think that's where you were given the job to take Hoofer and then take the dead bodies to the refuseries. This yeah. is just how I play RPGs as well, where I get lost on side quests and I go, what was the main was thing the main I was thing? doing? Where did I, go? Where <laughs> I head for the east. I head for the east. I, r- I race. Please, t- please tell me you put Ramian back down. He's I throw him in the topaz uh, liquid. No, 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 I help him out. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. And maybe in exchange for me helping you, you can tell me what this liquid does. Oh, it helps us control the animals. By you, oh. by you drinking it? Yeah. You can dominate them. Oh. Watch. He puts a, a chain around a very scary looking dire wolf, which then becomes very... Uh, uh, subservient ooh. and like listen to him. Do you think him. we should maybe bottle some of this yeah. up? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I saw that light bulb go up over Chris's head as that happened. Do we have any? Do we have yeah. any empty canisters? I, I have an empty like the jar of the baboon. I drank that, so baboon. that that thing is empty now. So yeah. I could potentially bottle it. I, can I bottle some? Yeah. Could you what? Bottle some. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, <laughs> yeah, you had a little bit <laughs> extra. Can I bottle some? Can I bottle some and drink some and look for a, a big strong beast? <laughs> I'm right here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Please say there's no other animals in the bestiary. Yeah, you uh, drink some, you bottle some, and there are, unfortunately, animals in the bestiary. There's a, a brown bear in the cage. I'll take that one. That's going to go well when you do a bad animal handling check. Mm, it's almost like I picked it on purpose, huh? <laughs> <laughs> come on along, bear. What? I said, come along, bear. No, you said, oh. come on long bear. Yeah, you did. Well, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the bear uh, emerges, and um, are you going to put a chain on it? Yeah. Okay, it allows you to to, 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 to put a chain around it. All right, boo-boo, let's go. So you all uh, leave to the east, which I takes you through. grab Chip and fly just through all the doors so fast. This, there's not actually a door to the east. There's a ramp that leads up into the cellar. Then east of the cellar is a wooden double door. Yeah. Are you which go, we, which, oh, uh, Are you going to go was, through the left or the right, Matid? I think it was left, wasn't it? Because we did it wrong both times. Yeah! We, go through, <laughs> we go through the right door. Chip and I fly through the left door. Okay, well, oh, Elga never. said it first. Uh, she's going, uh, as you are, as Chip and Matid are discussing it, Elga becomes tired of the situation and walks through the right door. I think right was wrong. I just like that we were like, like we went to Elga's home. She's like, let me show you around. And we got lost. And she's like, it's right, it's right over here. It's right over there. Like, I must spend time down here. <laughs> I'm very sheltered, kid. Roll me a D20, please, Elga. Okay. People listening to the show screaming that it's the other door. Well, they just listened to it. You, It's been a couple of weeks for you. 19. As you're going through the right-hand side of the door, you very narrowly miss a battler who's coming out that same side. Uh, you get there just a fraction of a second before him. And he goes, whoa, excuse whoa, pardon me. Right. Uh, sorry. I I was dizzy. I uh, just got uh, turned around. Oh, he almost doesn't stop. He just, like, does a quick twirl and then keeps going to the west. All right. We go through the doors. And I assume everyone else goes through the what side? Matid and Chip? 
Right side? What? You left really? Side, left <laughs> side, left side. <laughs> That's why, I, and that's why I asked. Left side, left side. <laughs> Chips. Uh, Chris says with such confidence. <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah. You all walk into the commissary, and there's uh, quite a lot of activity in here. You, and in fact, someone locks eyes with you, Uh-oh. Barney. Oh. And says, "Oh, you're back. Are you done already?" With the errand I gave you. It's me, Count Twenty Wayne. Yes, of course I am. Was the letters, or was he the rat guy? The rat, I think it was the uh, the animal. The refusery. Refusery. Yes, it was. Yes. Oh, excellent, excellent. Oh, you saved me so much work. Well, no, let it never be said that Count Twenty Wayne doesn't keep his word. Twenty Wayne. I never would. It's time for me to give you your reward. Here, follow me. Uh, and he stand, stands up from where he's sitting and begins, like, motioning for you to follow him. Okay. I follow as well. Yeah. Me too. Same. He leads you up to the northern portion of the room. And uh, if you remember, this was a large dining hall. Yeah. It has like a bunch of people in it. There's two long tables running parallel through the center of the room uh, with battlers sipping from rusty goblets. And to the north are a few tapped barrels resting on a bench next to some empty goblets. Yeah. He leads you up to the uh, the large wooden barrels at the northern end of the room, and there's four of them. And he, he walks straight up to the fourth one. And he grabs an empty goblet and taps the fourth barrel three times, and he whispers something to it. And the barrel pops open, revealing a secret door. Oh, is that easy? We could have found it there. It's right there all along. There you go. Direct access to the dregs. Did I hear what he said? Make a perception check. I want to do it too. I was listening. Mm-hmm. Doesn't the dregs just yeah. take us down to the I, moat? With my, my best feature, I listen as well. <laughs> Chris was very excited to say that. <laughs> rolled a 13. I only rolled a 10. Perception? So. Yeah. Time to save us, Chris. Bring it home. Eight. Okay. What did you just say? Oh, it's a secret. But there you go. Access to the dregs. Maybe do me another uh, favor down the road and I'll let you know. What does dregs mean? I believe you all were told in the last episode that it's a black market. Right. Okay, so we have the dregs is where we can go to, or we have the door to the right. To there the was east. another door to the east out of the commissary. Yeah, to the east. Which we uh, should probably go Should to. we try out the dregs? Let's, I'm curious about the dregs now. I mean, if we're here. If All it, right. It's like one of those stores in the mall where you're like, oh, this seems nice. You just kind of poke your head in. Before we, uh, yeah. before we leave, though, sparrows. could I ask Twinty Wayne, does this close behind us? Is there a way to get back in here? Oh, you can open it from the inside. Okay. Let's go to the dregs. Yeah, so you all have a brief climb through a tunnel that opens up into a lively den packed with battlers dancing to jaunty music being played by a small band in the corner. Off to the sides are more battlers sitting at pub tables trading knickknacks. We go to the trading knickknacks table? Yeah, so you walk over to the trading table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's various battlers sitting around with the numerous knickknacks, a few different knickknacks on their tables. Is Quiffly in here? Quiffly is not in here. Okay. What you got, guys? Yeah, you walk up to the first one you see, and it's a rather plump orc. He's got a big goblet in front of him. You walk up, and he begins sniffing. Hmm, you have some of that potion on you, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. I see. Perhaps I can interest you in some of these wares. And you see in front of him, there's on the table, there's an axe, some crossbow bolts, oh, some baked goods. There's like a brownie, and that's all he has in front of him. There's some more knickknacks on the next table over, though. What do these knickknacks do, Patty Wack? Which one, specifically? Crossbow bolts. You have a good eye. These are silver pane bolts. Oh. They're magically coated in silver, which is uh, not allowed around here if you don't know. I'll take the lot. All right. There are five of them. And what uh, what, what might they say? What do you have to trade? You got that potion thing you just got. Yeah, I've got the, some potion I just got. I've got a bear. Yeah, that potion's free. That bear's free, too. Uh, <laughs> I've got uh, the, these delicious fruits. Ooh, uh, tell me more about the fruit. Well, why don't you have one? Don't. <laughs> oh, God. You give him the fruit? Well, they aren't worth much if you're giving them away, are they? They might make you dead for a little bit. But tell me more about it. They're secret fruits that when you take them, I have I have several of them. I cannot remember how many, and I can't remember exactly which ones, ones they do. But let me check my flax. Hold up one second. <laughs> Let me check my <laughs> slack. His pants. His pants, His yeah. pants, yeah. He's got his notes uh, in there. There was the blood oranges, the mort apples. Yeah, I got like four or five of them. I have mort apples. I can also take hemo pieces, by the way. Oh, wonderful. God, I don't know how many hemo pieces I've left. I give whatever hemo pieces I have. Well, how many do you have? I don't remember, guys. Well, I mean, quit interrupting if you're going to say stuff you don't know. I don't think you have any. What's special about these brownies? Is there anything special or is they just that tasty? 
Oh yes, the old Bard Baked Brownies. Metagame wise, you gain 1d10 of Bardic Inspiration. Oh, that's actually very good. There's three bites per brownie. Oh, if I give you a marked apple right here, would you be, would that be a, uh, yes. Oh, that's a good sound. Sorry, what audience. What is that? What does it do? <laughs> is that him smelling it? Yeah. No, he's not like getting up and smelling it. Like where he's sitting, he's like, I his nose the, is going crazy. I think the Mort apple was the feigned death one. I believe so. Yeah, because of the na the word Mort. Food for food. An interesting proposition. Yeah. Yes, that's a fair trade. All right. I give him one of my Mort apples and I get a brownie. Mm -hmm. That is called a brownie of what? Bard baked Bard brownie. Bard baked brownies. And how many apples would you like for those bolts? Food for bolts? <laughs> That's a little different. That's not food for food. Five for five. All right. I think I have five fruits. Do you have them in your inventory? He bought a bunch. I will I, say that. Yeah, you I did. Have, I have one glary berry. I, I did not. That was the one time I didn't add it to my inventory because we were like ru ru rushing out, I feel like. I think he got three, four of each. Or four, four of two, each. Four of two of them is what I think he said because I just listened to the episode, but I don't remember the exact numbers. Yeah. Just say it's four of two of them. So then we get rid of all of one of them and then keep only three of the other. There you uh, go. And then you said you had berries, Barbara. Did I hear you right? I have one glary berry. <laughs> mm, berries. What do those do? The glary berry. Well, let me tell you, it's a milky grape-sized fruit with red veins. Grants advantage on perception and intimidation checks for one minute, but the target can't blink for the duration. Afterwards, the target is blinded for one minute so their eyes can rest. Perhaps that and some hemo pieces that can get you something that I think would be perfect for you, Miss Von Brath. What's and what's that? This bat toll axe. Bat, toll, uh, axe. Yeah, I'll be willing to trade this. Again, you can't show anyone this. This is a silver battle axe. It's not allowed in the vampire. Could I do a, like a check on that? Like, what do you mean, like an insight check? Insight check? Yeah. If she, they're like telling you, the truth. Do you bite it? You go. Yeah, make an insight check. <laughs> she dies when she bites it. <laughs> 11. Do you think he is being truthful? Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll give up my glory berry for this. And a couple of hemo pieces? This is a fantastic axe. Maybe five hemo pieces? Okay, yeah. Five hemo pieces and this berry. Excellent. A pleasure doing business with you. I think you mean excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and uh, read uh, what it says and how it describes that bat toll axe. Okay, so this bat toll axe, love the pun by the way, it has sterling strikes, which is the silver battle axe offers plus two bonus to attacks and damage rolls. Ooh. Nice. Uh, has bat barrage. Uh, when you attack a creature, you could use a bonus action to speak a command word. The battle axe transforms into a swarm of bats that attacks the target for up to one minute. That's awesome. When the swarm is killed, or if the target is killed, the swarm turns back into a battle axe and falls to the ground. You could use this feature once per long rest. And it also has fanged ferocity. When you score a critical hit with this weapon against a creature, they have to make a constitution saving throw of DC 13 plus your proficiency bonus. On a failed save, they take an additional 2d8 necrotic damage. And on a successful save, they take half damage. You regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage dealt. Let's see? Oh my God. That's powerful. It's almost as if you don't need your Fang Frost anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that orc uh, looking out for you, good old uh, Jeff Boriardi. <laughs> That's his name. That's his name, Jeff Boriardi. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, 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 of course. Enjoy your berry. He's, yeah, he's, he's sniffing the food you all gave him very uh, in, intently. Uh, remove that from my backpack. Chip, you have a crossbow. Yeah. Take some of these bolts. I give uh, two of them to Chip. After all, Chip did use up a lot of his ammunition to shoot himself constantly to get the emo pieces. True, he's right, true. He's right. <laughs> The next table over, uh, it's a hairy goblin who begins, w like, he sees this trade going on. He's, like, motioning you all over to look at his stuff. Really quick. The the thing where the axe turns into a, f a f flurry of bats, I think it'd be kind of cool if, never mind. <laughs> wait, 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 what were you going to say? Hey, that could be, like, a cover for her, uh, an exit. Oh, like, yeah, she yeah, turned yeah, to yeah, the, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The and then yeah. just like a, like a smoke screen, but made of bats. Yeah. How many axes do you have now? Like, is that four? The lady never tells. <laughs> I mean, I have three plus the Fang Frost. I thought you might have had a fourth one. The goblin's waving at you all. I go over to the goblin. I go, I go as well. Bonjour! What do you have to sell? Welcome to Polaris' table. Oh, I love you from X Factor. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I've got some stuff here. You, you want to take a look? Yes, I would love to look at your wares. Yeah, I've got uh, some Hocus Pokes. They're silver dots. 
Just don't tell anybody. You got oh you have you have you have silver ears. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's silver dots. Darts. Yeah, yeah. What else yeah. do you have? You have a knife, cool knife? No, I have an egg. You have an egg. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, holds up and uh, points out an egg actually on his table. What does this egg do? Uh, if you crack it, a gooseling comes out and attacks. Oh, like a little friend. Yeah, a, a little gooseling. How long does a gooseling goose. last? What's the life expectancy of a gooseling? Yeah. How many goose does a goose, 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 gooseling, gooseling, goose? Until, you know, until it dies. It's a permanent, it's, it's an actual little gooseling? Yeah. You know, like, um, uh, ooze, not a goose. A gooseling. 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 Yeah, and I get this bag of magic chips. No, no, I'm chip. This is for you then, bag of magic chips. Magic chips. Magic yeah. chips. So you can chips? see it's a confetti-colored bag, and it's labeled Variety Fun Pack. Oh, this sounds fun. Like, what does it do? Uh, sour screaming onion. <laughs> does it give any sort of buff, or is it just Sorry, a delicious... Is it just Blurb. a delicious snack? Uh, yeah, a boo ranch. I bet you it's got random effects. Yeah, all kinds. Terrified onion. Oh, Meta speaking, there's often, like items in D&D &D that just do random uh, magic. Meta, meta speaking, this is an item that was created in Discord with first members. Ooh. What? The goozling egg and the bag of magic chips were, were something. How much was the chips? I'm, I, I have no cost. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm priceless. <laughs> you need to put more value in yourself, friend, okay? Oh, your friend's name is Chip too. It is. Oh, a Chip Chip discount. I think that would be very wonderful of you to do. So, two hemo pieces. Sure. I'll buy it for you. No, I'm buying it for you. No, I buy for you. No, 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 I insist. I insist. I hand over my two pieces. I take pieces. them and I throw them across the room and I, I give them my two pieces. I, I grab them and I bring back I'll three. Take it if you want. Give me your knife. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can write. Uh, so one of you deduct two chemo pieces and write bag of magic chips. Wait, what were those dart things? So I'm doing this. Hocus pokes? Hocus pokes? They're, are they like throwing darts? Yeah, three silver darts. Oh, that's a broke thingy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. What do they do? They're just silver? A plus two. You're just throwing numbers and words at me. Plus two. Plus two what? Attacking damage. Oh, okay. How much are those again? Two silver? Three silver? The four emo pieces. I feel like I feel like if we might be uh, fighting some Sferatu at some point, this would be very helpful. How about that chip discount? Three hemo pieces. Sure, how many got? How much does three buy? Uh, three darts. Three darts for three hemo pieces. Yeah. Okay. W one, Do one each. Yeah, I take them. And then the uh, goosing egg, how much for that? Would you trade? Yeah, what do you got? I got a more apple. Oh, food's his thing. And he points over at... Uh, this is an egg. At Jeff Boriardi. An egg, uh, food for food. Uh, food for food? Uh, yes, yeah, okay. Okay. You all hear a scream down the hall. <laughs> Who cares? Coming from the other direction. <laughs> then voices are shouting. Tell the truth. Let go, I don't know anything. Barney, that second voice is unmistakable. It's her, you know it. She's in trouble though, what are you gonna do? What? You know that voice. She's just down the hallway you were just in. Who, what, I run. You see her. A Sparatu is gripping her arm and won't let go. Who? But she's not alone. Two young boys run up and start throwing their fists against Sparatu's wings. But it easily knocks them both to the ground. It's up to you, Barney. Your family needs you. Marnie needs you. Adorable. I shoot him with a crossbow. We'll find out if that hits but in the next episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. <laughs> I want to call out that I said that. I said, this sounds like they might be battlers because they're rushing around. You yeah, we, we were like, oh my God, Chip is inadvertently the greatest detective in the world. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you. <laughs> all right, find out what that's all about in the next episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Barney, your family. Barney and Bernie. What are your kids' names? There are many ways Little Stinkers can support the show, commenting on social media, rating us on podcast services, interacting with us on Discord, or telling friends about the show by word of mouth. Stinkers like at fake account to get his name on Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Hmm. Uh, also at Minring, at Idiot with Ideas, at Truffled Barrel, and at Planet of Cows. Listeners that interacted with us on social media and Discord had NPCs named after them this episode, like Quiffly, Elgo's Battler, named by at Aerie the Ace, voiced by Ben Ernst, at Halcyon underscore Ben, Aramian, the nervous laughing battler, uh, at Dino Essay on social media, Twenty Wayne by at BB on social media, Jeff Boriardi, the dregs merchant battler, at Duffinator56 on first, voiced by Hector Gonzalez, at HBag22, and finally, Polaris, the dregs merchant battler, by his Polar Bear TC on first, voiced by Cody Hawkins, at Hot Hand Hawkins. Additionally, the Sferatu are voiced by David Sanye at David underscore Sanye. I know that guy. 
and Marnie Farney is voiced by Caroline Grossman at Caroline underscore Constnar. The Stinky Dragon channel is managed by Ben Ernst. This episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon was produced by Kai Cook, written, edited, and composed by Michael Reisinger with additional editing and producing work by David Sonye. Tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. What do tieflings say for like cheers? Uh, no, it's Wisconsinites. Oh yeah, Wisconsin. We say, uh, I don't know, <laughs> improv. Well, <Whoopa. laughs> <laughs>